Guys, today we're at the RD&I facility here at Anderson Windows Research, Development, and Innovation. We walked you guys through some of the fabrication details and how this stuff is put together. And today we're gonna to show you how they test this stuff. They test it from an air and water infiltration perspective. They test it from a structural perspective. Impact. Impact is, we're excited for impact. The coolest, we'll save that for the end of the video so you gotta watch the whole video. Yeah. One of the first things that they do with these windows is they're gonna put it under a water test. And they're gonna simulate eight inches of rain per hour with a 55 mile per hour wind gust constant to the face of this window. And what that's gonna do is essentially simulate, you know, kind of a worst case scenario where they're gonna you know, chase down to see if there is any water leakage. I think that we're probably ready to start shooting some water yeah. at these windows. So, so let's get the test fired up. Cool. Nick, this is pretty crazy to see how much water is actually sheeting off of this window yeah. at, a, at a constant rate. Each head, minimum five gallon bucket. If we have 36 heads, you know, that's over 150, 180 gallons. Yeah. Per hour of water being, that's being directly forced at the face of that window. On your window. So yeah, again, they're really looking to isolate this unit. And if you look in there, it's going to be testing jam liners, the sill, the head jam, the leg jam, all of the construction of the sash, any silicone, all of the joints on this window are being tested with this water at this rate, which is pretty impressive. There's also that negative pressure on the back side of this window. They actually mount this window into a frame that has a gasket on it, so they can pull negative pressure on it, again, simulating that 55 mile per hour wind gust. And moving at your building at a horizontal yeah, angle. Yeah, 12 inches away. One of the questions I asked yesterday is, well, what happens if there is water leakage? How do you know where it's coming from? So most of the time, it's pretty obvious. They can see it in the corners, so they're gonna address the corners. But if it's not, they typically will grab a red uh, clothing dye and then spray it around the window. So they're gonna check the areas such as that corner over there if they think it's gonna leak. They're gonna spray that, see if it makes its way through. And if that's the case, they know that's the corner that's leaking. Once they determine what the failure point is, that's where they do go back to engineering. They re-engineer this to make sure it's not going to fail. And then they're gonna bring that revised version back and go through another round of tests to be sure that that corner has been resolved. And that's done across about a thousand of these uh, tests over and over to make sure that that unit truly isn't going to leak. I did get red dye on my brand new white van, so. I do want to articulate here that the point of this is to isolate that unit, not necessarily look at the install and just really test the unit itself. After they are shedding that water on that window, potentially using that dye, they're gonna come on the back side of this unit and if need be, use a light, check all of the critical areas that potentially could leak and make sure that you don't have any intrusion points and it looks like we are good to go here. That's impressive. They do test the flashing details that they recommend in their instructions, but that is not this test. This test, like Tyler said, is strictly for the unit. So any flashing details or silicone or sealant that you'll see in this video, that is strictly to kind of isolate the unit by itself. One of the things we talked about when we were on the, the fabrication floor is the corners. Yeah. And that's really one of the areas that you're gonna see most of the, the leaks is those corners and that's why it's so important to use these one piece gaskets or these continuous gaskets uh, or if something does have a seam, kind of moving that to a location that is less likely to leak. They're testing here to ensure that that window is performing above industry standard. Um, so a lot of times they will test the failure unless they get to a point where it's like, we could run this test for however long and this window's not going to fail. They'll pull back at that point, but look, they're generally running these above industry standard, ensuring that their windows uh, perform above what's what's required minimum. And not only that, but they're, you know, if, if this is a new product for them, they're gonna run, I think, close to 100 of these through testing to be sure, and then, then, then take the average of like, what, you know, how many did fail, when did they fail, and then they're gonna report that back to engineering so they can improve, you know, if it's always, uh, if it's always leaking in one particular spot, they know that they can go back to engineering and say, hey, this is our trouble area. We've tested 100 of them, 67 of them have failed in the same spot, let's improve that. And that's really part of Anderson's commitment to continuously improving their product. So coming from the water test wall, now we're talking about structural testing. 
Yes, yeah, so we're at another one of their test walls within this facility, which is going to be testing air loads on this door. There's two scenarios. You can have a positive pressure and a negative pressure. So positive is from the outside of the building in. Essentially wanting to push this glass into your house. Uh, the negative would be if this glass was being sucked on and trying to be ripped out of its opening and ending up in your neighbor's yard. And the way that that would happen is if you have a positive pressure on the front of your home, essentially creating a negative pressure on the back side. During this test, um, we're only going to be testing for the positive just because if not, we'd have to cover the front of this. Yeah. So in order to show you guys this video, we're just going to be um, applying a positive load on here. We're going to be testing this to 145 miles per hour, 3,400 pounds of force against this door. Which is about equivalent to uh, a Jetta, a VW Jetta, not yeah. a GTI. What, what do you drive? A GTI. Yeah, GTI. What are you doing with this this piece of wood right now? All right, so I have a two, a two by on the center style here, and you can see as we increase the vacuum that it's bending that style in pretty pretty far. That's that's pretty substantial. We're like yeah. three quarters of an inch right now. It's crazy to when you look at this without a straight edge up there. Okay, we're over an inch. It's not as apparent as once you get that straight edge up there, how much deflection there actually is. It's a little bit scary. You nervous? Yeah, a little bit. We're at an inch and a half, man. Yeah. We're at an inch and a half. And this door is a pretty standard height, maybe eight foot door. So something to note, not only again, how much this is deflecting, but watch when this retracts how far back this is going and there's no permanent damage to that center style. Look at that. So it's going back to its initial position. So that door is going to glide and function. It's interesting too, because like, we're obviously talking about the center style, but that glass is doing the same thing. I know. And it's, it's scary. You, you think that this right here, this edge of glass, right? Edge of glass is, is bowing in inch and a half. And this over here is still flat. Straight, yeah. So when you think about glass, you don't think that it has the, the elasticity that, uh, of something like that. And they're testing that it's not going to fail and break, but also what they're going to do is to test that there's no permanent deflection, right? So right. not only is this door going to withstand this load, but they also want to ensure that it comes back and you don't have any permanent damage to rail styles glass that's going to prevent this door from functioning. Everything on the outside is going to be supported by your, your rough opening. And this is gonna be your longest unsupported span. They set up these, these string gauges and this is what this washer here is. And this string gauge come, gets pulled out and attached to this washer. And what they're gonna do is get their baseline, so z essentially zero it out, run this under a test, get that deflection you know, at, at 145 miles per hour. For 10 seconds. For 10 seconds, and then they're going to allow it to retract. Now they're looking at you know, how much does it deflect because we don't want it to fail at 145 miles per hour, so making sure it doesn't fail. Then equally as important as when it does return back to no load, is there any permanent damage? A string line is a, a very precise tool, even though it's a very primitive tool. This is a string line. It's a potentiometer that's, I believe he said, measuring up to three decimal places. Yeah. So this is very, very accurate, creating that control, measuring maximum deflection, and then back to our point after the load's applied. This product, if it was a coastal unit, it would actually go to impact testing and then back here to be cycled. For this video, we're actually gonna switch over to the impact wall that has a coastal product on it. We'll go through impact and then we'll show you what that cycle testing looks like. So what if we take this and we put it in a potato cannon, fire it out a window? I think we need to put a weight on the back of it first and then we should be good. Let's do it. Let's up the ante. All right, after the structural test, now we're at the impact test. So this is an impact cannon. And this launches a two by four? A two by four with a hockey puck at the end of it. To seal, to seal up this uh, cavity so that they can get this charge of air and shoot this 34 miles an hour at a window that's over there. And the reason that they have this set up is primarily testing coastal products. Think about water intrusion. We think about structural tests with wind load, and all of that's great. The wind, the, the unit, you know, performs really well. But the reality is, if you if you have that high of a gust, there's going to be stuff up in the air, debris up in the air, and this is essentially simulating that. Yeah, and then once, if this this glass is broken, that protective film in there, even if that's still intact, you may have some water leakage, you may have air leakage. But the point is to ensure that this this window structurally 
remains intact and that you don't have massive parts of this window failing pulling from the house so it's a, it's a safety issue it is a laminated piece of glass and in between that glass is a film layer which essentially holds the glass together so when you see this th th this impacted that glass isn't just going to shatter into a, a, a million pieces and fall to the ground while it does shatter and it breaks and it, and it crumbles you know it stays intact the closest thing to compare this to which most people would know would be a windshield if you break a windshield there's still going to be that that film in between there that's going to prevent whatever broke that windshield from coming into the vehicle with you exactly so before we fire this uh, we're going to walk up to the glass so this is a, a fairly large unit um, and a couple things to note this particular unit is mono lamy uh, which means it is not insulated glass so an insulated glass is actually going to have what they call a sacrificial layer of glass on the outside, uh, essentially giving that airspace which they charge with gas and, and creates that insulated glass unit. So here they have that mono lamy, which is glass, a film, which is what's going to hold this together structurally, and then that second layer of glass. So insulated glass is, is more common, to, but it really is climate dependent, uh, where you know in the north you're not going to have uh, mono lamy just because of the performance. Yeah, so the only difference with this video is if there were that sacrificial layer on the outside and this impact were to hit this glass, you would have an initial glass fall to the ground and then you would have the glass, the film that's sandwiched together. So you're not gonna have that initial impact. It, what was really impressive to me yesterday is you're gonna watch this nine pound two by four come out of this cannon at 34 miles an hour, 50 feet per second, that's gonna hit this glass. And on our test, nowhere did that film become compromised. It, it moved in, it deformed, yeah. but it was not compromised. So there were no holes in it, there were no tears in it. And to think how strong that is to withstand the force of that two by four at that speed and not tear, it's, it's reassuring. I mean, I don't know if I'd stand behind it, but if I'm in a house and there's stuff flying around the air, I'm feeling pretty confident. Well, behind the camera, there's a bunch of people saying that we're not standing behind it. Oh, so. we will not. So you guys can see when this fires off, we're gonna have a laser pointer showing us the point of impact for this cannon. So I know that you guys have seen us, we've rebranded. One of our first big purchases, I think, is gonna be an impact cannon. I think so. Yeah. I think we could really do a lot of <laughs> I was going to say good with it, but I'm not sure how that, that really applies. All right, should we, should we do it? I, I'm ready to go. Okay, I got my fingers all stretched out. I'm ready to hit the button. Five, four, three, two, one. Cleared for takeoff. So shot one is complete, uh, which is crazy because, I mean, probably because because this unit's so large, but this right here, that's not broken. Yeah, the, the outer panel of glass did not break, just the internal. It, it's insane. I mean, that there was a tremendous amount of force. And, you know, before you guys in the comments say anything, yes, that was our target. That's where we hit. But that's just the nature of a two by four flying out of a cannon at 34 miles an hour. So they're actually going to set up another test. They're going to actually come over and hit six inches up from the corner here and then fire again. And then we'll go through that cycle testing to see, you know, the, the, the negative air and positive pressure, basically allowing this thing to breathe and see how it interacts being completely shattered. Yeah, I really hope that the video does the listeners or the viewers justice as to how hard this impact was. You know, we're not talking necessarily about the glazing and the glass itself, uh, even though that's a large portion of the windows and the doors that Anderson makes here. What they're actually chasing down is failure when it comes to how it is still connected to the jam. Yeah. You know, yes, this needs to be replaced, but in the time being, like, did they lose structural integrity? Did, do they have air leakage? Do they have more, uh, water and moisture leakage? The fact that it's still attached to the window unit and the sash itself, if, you know, it, it doesn't matter what this is doing, if this fails or pulls apart, right. um, that's no good for them. But this is, this is a really impressive test here. And the fact that this is not broken, there's no glass on the outside. It's a testament to how well this is built, this entire component, not just the film and the glass, but how it's attached to the rest of the sash and everything yeah. else. It's, it's a very strong 
overall unit and that's what they're looking to test here. So we're gonna fire one more shot from the impact cannon and then we're gonna uh, cycle the air to create some pressure on this entire unit. That was the second shot and it actually broke the outside layer and he's got this thing cycling on and as you can hear it's continuing to crack um, but they're they're cycling that in it's he he said that it's huffing and puffing and that's exactly what it's doing you can see the the negative and positive air the the fluctuations in air pressure there that is pulling and pushing this glazing in and out and the entire unit is remaining intact. You know, if this was traditional glass or this, or if that film broke, um, which I, I swear it keeps sounding like it, it's going to, but if that film broke, they wouldn't be able to build any pressure. You're in a hurricane, right? And there is something has hit your window, not once, but twice. And, and you still have these giant gusts of wind blowing against this, this glass. It's continuing to, to maintain its integrity. It's continuing to protect the, the, your environment in your home. And if you're, you know, Frankly, if you're in your home, like this is this is a great um, protection. Yeah. So the goal with all of this is to maintain an equal pressure within your home, and it's not just the glass, it's not just the film, it's the frame, it's the way that they attach this film. All of those parts has to remain intact, or else this is a failure. And and witnessing this test firsthand, and really seeing how much it takes for this unit to handle these air loads and these impact loads is it's it's crazy to witness with your eyes it's a little bit scary this is really what goes into building a quality product so when we were at the other structural test we talked about 145 miles per hour um, and that was not broken that was just done on a unit to check deflection and make sure that would return back to what I would call zero this one's broken and the wind speed on this one 180 miles an hour. So they have a, a wind speed of 180 miles an hour on this window that was impacted in two places, one in the center and then one in the bottom right corner. Um, and that, that's putting roughly 4,000 pounds of pressure of force on this window. So 600 more pounds than over there, plus two massive impacts to this, and it's still maintaining its structural integrity. So this would be a coastal product. This is crazy to see. It's crazy to think that 600 more pounds of pressure on a unit that's been broken twice. Yeah, which, in, in, and just for reference, guys, this piece of glass is five foot by 10 foot. Yeah. So it's not a small piece of glass. And uh, in my opinion, it's doing what, what it's supposed to do. So guys, a real big thank you to Anderson Windows for inviting us here, sharing kind of their process from their window and door manufacturing to how they're testing those things, and a little bit about the story of that, what goes into their products, the overwhelming amount of things really going on here and what it took to build a company like this over the last 120 years to be able to deliver a product at the scale in which they do. Yeah, it's, it's really neat to think how far they've come in 120 years. And we, we say that number and it seems like a long time, but from what they've come from, from a, a family business and moving across the river and then creating their first factory and basically bundling window frames that could get assembled on a job to pre-assembling windows to now making massive doors and massive um, glazed, glazing units. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible and I, I think that the family would be pretty impressed with how far things have come in that short amount of time, what their factories look like, how much innovation and, and how much goes into their research and development for their products.